How's it going, everybody? It's the Dual Threat Podcast, your daily news source for all things sports. I'm Jacob. And I'm Drew. Uh, today, we're going to be bringing you a video about how uh, a team that we think can make the playoff will. Uh, but before we get into it, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We just passed 100 subscribers, and we're very grateful for yes, that. Um, so just, just keep the support coming. Um, also, make sure to follow us on Twitter, at Dual Threat. Uh, we post a lot of stuff on there. And if you're in the car, want to listen but can't watch, listen to us on Spotify. Um, without further ado, I think we are going to get into our video today about how the Indiana Hoosiers can make the college football playoff. Drew, take us away. All right, so you look at their record. They are currently 4-0, and and mm. it looks great. I mean, they've played Penn State, Michigan, which they looked great when they played them, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. We'll talk about the record of the teams they've played. But they are currently 4-0. They sit at a great spot. They have Ohio State this weekend, easily their most uh, – their biggest matchup this year. Um, and really, whoever wins that game is pretty much guaranteed to be in the Big, t uh, Big Ten Championship. So, um, coming up this weekend, Ohio State. What do you think about that game? 11 a.m. kickoff. Yeah, you know, uh, looking at it. I mean, it's going to be a tough one for the Hoosiers. I mean, you, you just it, there's nothing really much else to say. You look at it, Ohio State's averaging 511 yards per game. They're averaging 46.3 points. Um, I think a big key for Indiana is it, it's going to be you're, it's going to be hard to stop Justin Fields. It, mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's going to be possible to stop Justin Fields. So you have to take advantage of that Ohio State defense that has not been good this season. They they give up 356 yards per game, which is almost 40 more yards per game than Indiana's defense gives up, which is – that's a big advantage for them. They they need to take advantage of that. Ohio State also is giving up four more points per game than Indiana is. I think they need to get out in front early because if they fall behind, I can't see a world where Justin Fields lets off the gas in this one against mm -hmm. a 4-0 Indiana team. So I think I think they need to get out early, take advantage of that Ohio State defense, and play the whole fourth quarter, four four quarters, mm -hmm. and and just not not give up, uh, not let up on this one. Well, here's the good thing about this this matchup this weekend. Uh, we're gonna talk about the teams Indiana has played and how they haven't really proven themselves. But the teams Ohio State has played is a combined two and seven on the season. They played Penn State, who looked promising at the beginning of the year. Going into the season, they were top ten. Um, without even playing. We talked about how we, we kind of disagreed with them ranking people before they started playing. But, um, yeah, they're 2-7. They're and seven. They haven't really proven themselves yet. Uh, like you said, that defense really isn't that, that solid, especially against these teams that, you know, aren't really that great. Um, really disappointed to see that Maryland game get canceled for Ohio State. I thought that would have proven a lot. I think Maryland is actually looking like a great team. And here's the thing about Indiana. Um their opponents are, that they've beaten. I mean, it's really easy to hop onto this bandwagon, but they're three and thirteen combined, and or three and twelve, something like 13. that. And so it's really easy to jump on the bandwagon. They're four and zero. They haven't really been, you know, great in the past. They look great this year. Well, the teams they're playing are not very good so far. But here's the downside to this season: the remaining schedule they have is against Ohio State, Maryland, Wisconsin, and Purdue. That's a three and O team, or yeah, three and O, two and one, two and two and O, and then two and one two team. And, one. and so, I mean, you've played all your bad teams. Now you're gonna have to prove yourself the rest of the season. It, I mean, it's pretty good, you know. I mean, it's hard knowing that you have to play week in and week out for the rest of the season. But at least you had to this point to you know kind of get that offense going, especially with these wide receivers. Uh, they've looked great this year. Um. And so, yeah, they're going to have to really uh, show up this weekend for sure. I mean, you got Michael Penix Jr. throwing for 1,000 yards this year. Not really in the Heisman talks, but, you know, he's doing exactly what he needs to to, to win these games. And he's going to have to continue to throw that uh, those kind of passes this game. I mean, he's got like nine touchdowns in the season, which isn't great. But uh, I know his wide receivers are really good. I was watching him a, a few days ago. I think the guy name was like Ty Fry goal or something like that. He literally just, you know, kind of like – uh, Ian Book throwing up to to that uh, wide receiver we talked about last mm -hmm. week, literally just throws it up in double coverage. He catches it no matter what. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be really interested to see 
uh, this weekend's game. It's going to show a lot about the Big Ten, I think. Um, I mean, going forward is really what's going to show about these Big Ten teams. Because to me, I really don't know where these Big, te Big Ten teams are right now. And so I'm really excited to see Indiana versus Ohio State this weekend. Um, and even Maryland versus Indiana in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, definitely excited about that. So this weekend, they lose to Ohio State. Let's say they do. Okay. Are they still getting in the playoffs if they win out? They would need Ohio State to lose. Because they're not going to be able to make the playoff unless they win the Big Ten. There's just no way that that happens. Well, right. So, so they beat Ohio State in the Big Ten championship. Let's say they don't. They won't play. They're on the same side. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. That's so, right. So it, they would need Ohio State to lose a regular season game, and Ohio State's remaining schedule is Illinois, Michigan State, and Michigan. So, no, they don't. Um, I mean, maybe Ohio State loses to Michigan, but Ohio State has always has no offense to the Michigan fans. Out they there, would have to. But they have dominated that that rival for the past ten years. That's true, and you also look at, I was incorrect. They would have to win two games, because lose or they two, would have to, Ohio State would have to lose two games because Indiana would have yeah, or Ohio State have would have the, the tiebreaker, tiebreaker over. right? So no, I mean that, to put it frank, there's no way that they. Can. So do you think they could pull an A and M kind of thing and try and slip into that fourth spot without having to go to the championship if they do end up losing to that? The, to Ohio State this weekend, I think they would sit at seven and one. I can't. I don't think so. I mean, you, it because you look at the other teams that are in contention for that. They would put in Cincinnati undefeated over them. They'd put in BYU. I believe they they'd put in one loss A and M. I think they'd put in the loser of the ACC championship before they put in a seven and one Indiana team. That's probably fair. And so I think realistically it comes down to this game. I mean, this is the turning point of their season and they have, like you said, a pretty tough schedule from here on out. So it's not like they got more work to do after this week, but it all starts here because if they lose to Justin field and the Buckeyes, I can't see them making the playoff at all. Well, um, right. And you know, if, if they do end up losing Ohio State this weekend, a lot of things would have to happen. You'd have to have Notre Dame and Clemson would have to lose another game. Um, you'd have to have A&M lose a game. You'd have to have Cincinnati, BYU lose a game. You'd have to have the Pac-12 champion to lose a game. Mm -hmm. You'd have to have Oklahoma State lose another game. And so there's going to be a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. Really, their reality right now is in their hands. Their future is in their hands. They can do, they can make that playoffs, but it all starts with this weekend. They've got to yep. win this game. And this is really the only game they can win, and then they can lose another game, but still make the playoffs. I mean, if they beat Ohio State, lose to Wisconsin, they're still going to, uh, if I remember correctly, I think Wisconsin's on the other side, correct? Correct. So they would still play them again, and um, they could beat them. Maryland and Purdue already have that loss. So um, if they lost again, then, then they're out for the contingents of Big Ten. And so really, it all starts with this weekend. they got to beat Ohio State. Good news is Ohio State really hasn't proven themselves, but the bad news is Indiana really hasn't either. And so it all comes down to who's actually the good team this weekend. Um, and my thing with Indiana, I'm going to have to choose Ohio State to win this game. I mean, you talked about Justin Fields, how amazing he's been this year. But also, hmm. you look at their their uh, common opponents. We talked about this with like A&M and Florida um, you look at what they did with Penn State. They have Penn State had a lot of promise coming into this year. Um, they went to overtime with them, a top ten team. It looked really good. Now Penn State is zero and three, and so four. Oh, sorry, zero and four. And honestly, it wouldn't have looked that bad if Penn State didn't lose by double digits to Maryland this right. weekend. So, I mean, they are sorry two weeks ago, and then they lose to Nebraska right. as well. And so it's just really not looking good for Penn State. So that overtime win doesn't really look as good as it did when it happened. Uh, yeah, and so, so, and Ohio State beat them by, I think it was like 14, maybe, something like that, 13. And they beat Nebraska pretty handily as well and beat Rutgers as they should have. So, and sadly, that Maryland game got canceled again. I would have loved to see uh, Tua's little brother, uh, Tua Jr., play against them. <laughs> but, uh, Three -oh. yeah, it, it definitely starts with this weekend. Yeah, no, I... I totally agree. And like I was kind of touching on earlier and like you were saying, 
it's still Ohio State. And mm -hmm. that's, I mean, you come into this game, you look at last year, Ohio State had a very good defense, and that's no more for this season. And it seems like that's a common thing, theme in college football this year mm -hmm. is historically good defenses are not doing well. And I don't know if that's less preparation because of COVID or what exactly mm -hmm. is the cause of it. But Ohio State last year, I mean, they got rid of, they got rid of Chase Young went to the NFL. Right. So it's hard to replace a game changer like that. I mean, he went second overall. Um, but it's, you look at it and just overall, I mean, they had recently, they've had DBs that have gone. I mean, last year they had uh, Jeff Okuda go number three, I think, to the Lions. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. their defense historically has been good, and it's not, it's not this year. I mean, there's there's no other way to put it. There, it's not. They gave up twenty seven to Rutgers. They gave up twenty five to Penn State, who hasn't looked good. Mm -hmm. And I, like I was saying, I think that's where Indiana needs to attack. They need to get out early. They need to get those big receivers in the game. They need to get the run game going. And they, I mean, they have over 300 yard rusher through four games I mean that's that's solid mm -hmm. and i i just think they need to get that going and hope their defense can stop justin fields a couple times because that's i mean that's what they that's how they're going to beat ohio state is they they exploit that defense as much as possible mm -hmm. and they get a few stops to where they can hang on to the lead yeah, and I mean, you look at Justin Fields, hasn't thrown an interception this year. I mean, he's only played three games, to be fair. But, I mean, he still has 300 yards per game. He's got those 11 touchdowns, which is just insane Heisman-level numbers. But it doesn't really look like Ohio State turns over the ball that much. Granted, they haven't played the best defenses. And so I think if Indiana is going to win this game, because I think they're out uh, outplayed talent-wise. Absolutely. I, um, and so they're going to have to force some turnovers whether that's uh, from Master Teague or whether that's from uh, Justin Fields. I don't know. But I think to win this game, they're going to have to force Ohio State to make some mistakes because really defenses are not at their at their peak this right. year. I mean, historically, offenses win in college football. But I think even more, it's this year. And it looks to me like Ohio State's offense is better. But both teams has, haven't played a, like – a good team yet so i'm not really sure right uh maybe indiana come out comes out and surprises me but to me it looks like ohio state has the edge right now but yeah definitely excited to see this weekend for sure yeah I, th I think you hit the nail right on the head when you said they need to force turnovers because against good teams that's that's how you win games i mean mm -hmm. i know like i you look at for example the a&m florida game i mean that that game was one i mean it was back and forth the whole game a and m mm. fumbled but when it came down to it florida fumbling on their game winning drive mm -hmm. that was the turning point mm -hmm. and i think if indiana can hang in long enough and force a big turnover like that and get momentum shifting in their favor or maybe even like a big special teams play a punt mm -hmm. return kickoff return that's that's how they're gonna come away with this one they need flip momentum and not get behind early because Justin Fields is not going to let up the gas. Right, and you bring up uh, the A&M Florida game. There was, I think there was one punt in that game, may maybe not even a punt, and that's just showing how how dominant offenses are this year, right. whether that's the, the defense being down or whether that's just offense being amazing this year. Mm -hmm. I can't really tell you, but it's just this year, it looks like offenses are going to win the game yep. um, more than usual. I mean, usually you have Auburn up there with the, the defensive tier. You usually have Georgia, Georgia up there with a defensive tier, and they're losing these games pretty handedly, at least Georgia losing by 20 to Florida and Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, just because Georgia doesn't really have that dominant offense um, that, that you really need in college football nowadays. So Ohio State has that dominant offense. To me, it looks like Indiana kind of has that dominant offense, um, but neither team has played really that great of a team, and so I'm looking forward to this weekend. Uh, I don't know. It's it's going to be a close game, I think, but I, I think Ohio State comes out on top, and Indiana's chances of making the playoffs really go down in the dirt um, unless a lot of things happen. Yeah, the world would pretty much have to end if, if they lose this game. For well, them we are in play. COVID. That's so. true. Yeah, I, I mean, you look at it, another, a thing that 
Indiana has been struggling with that I think they need to do a better job of, and they have done a better job of the past few weeks, is time of possession because the Penn State game in week one, they got – Penn State had the ball for 20 more minutes than they did. And you look at week two against Rutgers, Rutgers had the ball – almost as long as Indiana did. It was pretty much split down the middle. And I mean you look at you look at a common game Penn State and Ohio State. Penn State had the or I mean Ohio State had the ball for 40 minutes. I mean it was totally flipped compared to the Penn State Indiana game. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a big focal point that they need to be focusing on in this game is holding the ball as much as they can because if you give the ball to Justin Fields, it's like giving it to Mac Jones or Trevor mm-hmm. Lawrence and getting that explosive dominant offense on the field Mm -hmm. and you just you can't do that with a team like that so i think they exploit the run game or exploit ohio state's run defense Mm -hmm. and stay keep their offense on the field as long as possible and that's their best shot and i talked about the bad games for indiana the last two games against michigan they had the ball 40 minutes compared to michigan's 20 Mm -hmm. and michigan state they had the ball 39 minutes compared to Michigan State's 21. So Mm -hmm. they can do it. It's Mm -hmm. just a matter of whether they can do it against a dominant offense like Ohio State Mm -hmm. who's struggling defensively. And I think think they can. They have a 300-yard rusher through four games. I just don't know if they're going to be able to, but we'll see. Right, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I think a lot of people are going to watch this and say, well, you're talking about how neither of these teams really have a great defense. Uh, Indiana shut out Michigan State. Well, I would say, look at the week before that, they played Iowa and they scored seven points. Right. So it's really not that they have a great defense. I just don't think Michigan State really has that great of an offense. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it really comes down to offenses this year. Who has the most dominant offense? Um, I think Justin Fields is the better quarterback than Michael Felix Jr. I, I, I don't think you can really argue that. But I guess... Michael Felix Jr. might show me up this weekend because it seems like quarterbacks have in the past on this channel. So right. Ian Book. And uh, Bo Nix with Auburn Ian versus LSU. Yep, that's true. So, I mean, I guess you never know. During COVID, anything can happen. I, mm-hmm. I didn't really think Kellen Mond would be a great quarterback. I didn't think Bo Nix would be a great quarterback. I didn't think Ian Book would be a great quarterback. They're all showing up this year. You know so. who we did think was going to be a great quarterback? Kyle Trask. That is true. That, we, that man That man is cold. Um. Yeah, and I know I've talked a lot about the run game, uh, but you you went into their receivers a little bit. Um, Ty Freifogel, I believe is how you say his name, has 424 yards, four touchdowns. Yeah. Um, a guy who – a big tight end, uh, Peyton Hendershot, who doesn't have as many receiving yards, only 89, but he has 14 catches and three touchdowns. And he he's proven to be a big uh, asset in the red zone, and it, it is a it's a big advantage when – you have a guy like that who it feels like is almost unguardable down uh, near the pylon because if you can get down there, if you can run the ball, if you can throw short passes, uh, let your receivers break off big receptions and get get your big uh, tight ends the ball in the red zone, I think that's that's a big asset that you see a lot of good teams. Like you, you look at Florida. I mean, if they get down inside the 20, Kyle Pitts is getting the ball. It feels like 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, translating it to the NFL a little bit, I mean, there's there's guys like you look at historically like Rob Gronkowski has been that kind of guy. And so it that's a big asset for them. I mean, they have, uh, they have like we said, Ty Freifogel, Wap Filor, I think is how you say his name, um, <laughs> who has almost 300 yards. I mean, they're they're both at 24 receptions. Like they're – offense has been humming Mm -hmm. it's just a matter of whether they can keep that going keep stevie scott going on the ground against that pretty vulnerable looking ohio state defense this year i think it's gonna be a great game to watch and i'm for sure excited to see if michael penix jr can pull uh pull this one out yeah it it for sure looks like uh every defense this year really looks like swiss cheese you know we we got a bunch of holes everywhere but um yeah i mean if if that's all from you i i think i'm I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the w- the way they got to do it, beat Ohio State this week. Mm-hmm. Focus on the rest of the schedule. I mean, it doesn't get a whole lot easier, but I mean, it, it all starts with this week. This is well, this right. is where and it sets the tone for their season here on. I out. mean, you look at the ESPN chances of people making the playoffs. 
I don't even think Indiana's in the top 10. I don't either. And so ESPN is really not giving Indiana a chance to win mm-hmm. this game or I guess to win out at all. So if Indiana is going to really improve their chances of getting in, I think if they beat Ohio State, they maybe have a 90% chance of getting in. Yep. And, and, and if they don't, then it's like a less than 1% chance. Mm-hmm. Everything's got to happen perfectly for them yep. here on out if they do lose this game. So it's got to start with this weekend. And uh, yeah, yep. I think I think that's it from us. Um, so we will be watching. We will be tweeting. We will be updating you on our picks uh, on Friday. And make sure to stay tuned. We will see you tomorrow. You got anything else? No, I think that's it. Thank y'all for coming out. Thanks for showing up.